we need a theory of how we can get people to click on website links. So we need a theory of how do we get people to pick things up in a store. We need theories of how we get people to open envelopes. So how do we get them to try products? How do we get them to buy products? And that's what the last mile uh, is all about. The last mile is challenging because the last mile is a, you know, it's, it's not a problem of operations. It's not a problem of reach. It's not a problem of marketing. It's a problem of psychology. And human psychology, as, as we've all read and, and, and heard several times, uh, is one of the most difficult things to model. Right? People are erratic. They do things that we wish they didn't do. Uh, they change their mind. Uh, they fall in love. They sometimes make stupid decisions. Uh, they're impulsive. They don't think. I mean, can you imagine trying to model a system like that? I mean, I talk to my friends in physics. And they tell me, well, if atoms did all of these things, there'd be no classical physics left. All right? uh, and, and so the idea behind the last mile is to think about, are there simple behavioral ideas, are there simple behavioral interventions that we can think of in a broader framework that would help organizations do well uh, at the last mile? Now, the, the, the bad news is that human behavior is incredibly complex. Right? The good news is that I think all of psychology, everything I know, right, uh, can be explained by three simple ideas. That's it. Right? So Psych 101, this is my one-minute version of everything you need to know in psychology. Uh, principle number one is that context is everything. You change the context, people's decisions change. Uh, this has massive implications for lots of things, including how we do market research. Right? We've been trained to come up with standardized market research techniques where we ask questions that are independent of context, uh, and that just misses the whole point. Right? Uh, that explains why we do research that show that people are, people are delighted, yet they don't come back, because you're measuring it in the wrong context. And so we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, principle number two uh, is the idea of procrastination. So human beings, you know, we're, we're all sensible people. Uh, we all know we should uh, save more money and eat healthy food and uh, spend more time with our children and work harder. Uh, but we do that tomorrow, not today. Right? Uh, and that's a very pervasive human behavior. I mean, uh, I suspect all of you have done something along the lines of, yeah, I'll commit to doing it. But when that day shows up, you go, damn, why did I say yes? That's a hallmark of human behavior, right? Uh, so all of us intend to do good stuff in the future, uh, but we never get around to doing it uh, in the present. Uh, and a third principle, a related principle, Sir Isaac Newton and his uh, laws of motion, the principle of inertia, unless people really need to change something, unless they really need to make a decision, they don't. Right? Um, so uh, case in point, uh, if you look at data in, uh, from the United States, from the 401k retirement plans. These are plans uh, for retirement where you sign up for the first time as a 22-year-old, fresh out of college, uh, first job. Uh, and you look at those data 20, 30 years down the line, it turns out a lot of people, about 40, 45%, never change their allocations over a 20-year window. Right? Your life has changed, your circumstances have changed, but you do not change your allocations because there is no active decision point. Nobody forces you to go in and change, so you don't, right? So inertia uh, plays a big role.